You did it! You just finished Fall Risk the Musical, the live stream staged reading of Act One. We are going to set up for our talk back now and we'll be back in just a few minutes. But if you have any questions relating to the creation of the show, the development, rehearsal process, or the filming, the cast and crew will answer them live in just a few minutes. Feel free to drop any of those questions in the comment section below, or you can email fallriskmusical at gmail.com and we'll try to answer as many as we can. Also, if you have any feedback for the show itself, questions, comments, concerns, compliments, feel free to drop those into our email or in the survey that we have available below. The more feedback we get, the better we can make a draft too. And be sure to be specific about what songs might need to change, go, stay, what characters you love, etc. We're so excited and we'll see you in just a few. Hello everyone. Welcome. Um, my name is Jack Tomey. I um, am one of the administrators here for the Fall Risk team um, and the project as a whole. I am joined by my other colleague, Mark Scott. Uh, and we will be moderating today's talk back uh, with some of the cast and crew members, some of whom are already here on this call with us, and we will be answering your questions. Uh, if you do not get your question answered that you may uh, have uh, burning inside you and really want to share, um, we will be sending a survey link to all uh, ticket holders. So know that in the next 24 hours or so, you will have the opportunity to share your feedback. Uh, but for now, we will start asking some questions that we have received from the cast, uh, for the cast. Um, we are joined right now by two of our composers, Andrew Kaczynski and Adam Brostowitz, as well as Sophia, who played Gabby, Mike, who played Uncle Robert, Tay, who played Lily, and Mary, who played Kiki. And we will be answering, asking them some questions, um, but I'm going to turn it over to Mark so he can do just that. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us, not only for the Fall Risk live stream of Act One, but for our lovely live Q&A with our fantastic team. So to start us off, I'm going to ask Adam and Andrew, quite simply, what is it like to compose for a brand new musical? Take it away, Adam. <laughs> um, it, was, it was very interesting. The, I mean, obviously fun overall. Um, Sorry, I hear the feedback or the replay in my ear right now of us talking earlier. Um, but yeah, it was it's just it was fun and we divvied it up to a lot of composers and we got some good stuff back. And Andrew and I ended up editing a lot of it and rearranging a lot of it. So it was just fun going back and forth with at least the two of us and with, you know, a lot of different composers in general. Great, thank you. Andrew, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I'll just say that uh, for us as composers, this is the moment because we composed these songs months ago. I mean, the first songs I started writing, I think was all the way back in November of last year. Uh, and to me, it was just notes on a page, ink on a page. And to have this moment and to hear our amazing cast bring it to life is just so rewarding. So thank you everyone for watching. Thank you to our incredible cast. Um, this is it. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much. Tay, I would like to ask you as an actor uh, in Fall Risk the Musical and other projects, what was your experience like to work on a brand new musical? Um, that's a great question. Um, I was actually really excited. Um, working on a brand new piece was actually something I've always wanted to do. Um, I don't think I've ever voiced that before. So uh, just going to check that off my bucket list there. Um, but it's, it's exciting. Um, you know, as, uh, as uh, you know, our composers mentioned, you know, when we got the um, tracks to audition with and then turning around and looking at the tracks to record, they're like, I don't want to say completely different, but you can definitely see the differences within them. And it's cool to see how it's gonna, um, how it has evolved, how it's gonna continue to evolve. And I'm excited to see like what happens next with this. It's a great show, it's a great story. 
Thank you. Yes, we are all looking forward to what comes next with this and thank each and every one of you for being a part of its inaugural reading. Um, so Mike, I would love to ask you, uh, what was it like being a member of the Michaels family within Fall Risk? How was it creating a family dynamic with people that you're only really talking to via a screen right now? Uh, it was kind of strange. I mean, you're always used to being in a room with people, you get to know them, you get to see their body language, you get to rehearse with them and catch all the nuances. This was like totally putting it on its end. And thank God that we had Mary, Barbara and Sophia because they made it so much easier because you could actually see it as they were reading it in their eyes, in their expression, in their tone. So you kind of had almost an advanced knowledge of, okay, this is gonna come out this way. So I'm gonna react this way. And this is gonna sound like this. So I wanna try to make it match or counter react to it but it was really more them than anything else I mean they were just it was so much easier to watch them read these lines and see it for to be able to react to it absolutely wow wild to really think of the differences that all of us have had to accommodate um, in order to make art accessible so thank you for speaking to that art accessible in this wild time that we're all living through Sophia, I would love to talk to you about playing the role of Gabby, uh, who, as I'm sure many of you know, is inspired by the writer and director, Nicole Kaur. I would like to ask you, what's one thing that you love about Gabby or something that you relate to, um, even if you're not, you're not physically someone with cystic fibrosis? Right, so of course I am um, able-bodied, and it was a challenge to, you know, play a role for someone who has cystic fibrosis, which is something I cannot relate to. And I didn't want it to be insulting or dramatic. I wanted it to be real. I wanted to bring justice to that. And I hope that's what I did. Um, overall, I think the best thing about Gabby is she is just like unapologetically her. Um, she's hilarious. There's no filter. Um, basically, when I was doing this, I was like, not trying to be cute, just trying to, you know, have fun. And I think that when I look back, like it was just so goofy, and and it that's what it felt like, just so 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 fun. And that's who she is. So I hope that I did bring justice to Nicole's life. Well, I think I speak for all the audience and the creative team in saying that you certainly did do justice Thank to you. it. Um, Thank you. Truly fantastic. Thank you. Mary, I would love to talk to you about playing a character that is based on a real person. And, you know, the whole family, the four of you guys, had the unique task of taking real people that you all know and bringing them to life. So how does that differ than okay. your standard musical or play where you're playing a fictional character? It had some special challenges um, that normally, as you say, with, with a regular play or musical, you have it based in fiction. You can sort of make up your own backstory. Um, with this, it was sort of a cross between because though Kiki is based on a real person, I wasn't, I never met her. I wasn't imitating her, but I was able fortunately to ask Nicole questions about where there were certain things I didn't understand about the character. And it was really wonderful to have, you know, be able to ask and, and find from the source to find out what things meant. And part of the interesting thing that went on during our rehearsals was, I think because this is at the stage where it is, we were able to ask questions and find out, you know, what certain lines meant or what was going on in the background. And some changes were made to make it more evident to the audience what was going on. Um, so it was a really interesting um, process. Definitely, and how unique and wonderful an experience to be in the room, the room, virtual room yeah. with writer. I mean, as theater people, that's not a luxury that we're often afforded. Um, 
especially when you are playing these real human beings that exist in our world, in our towns, our realities. Um, it's so exciting. So thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. So right now I'm going to pass the baton back over to Jack and he is going to lead in the next wave of questions. Thank you all so much. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you to the cast members that we've just heard from. Uh, you can go ahead and hide yourselves in mute if you um, feel so inclined, but I would love to speak now with uh, Jacqueline and Marissa, Dan, Savannah, and Dominic, our wonderful ensemble troupe uh, who played a multitude of characters throughout the piece. Um, you all did a very, very excellent job in um, adapting to the situation and showing the multitude of these characters across uh, the whole performance. One question we have uh, that I will ask of Jacqueline, uh, was there anything you learned about cystic fibrosis or the chronically ill community that you didn't know before or any interesting thing that you wanted to share? Um, yeah, actually I have always heard of the, of the term or like the disease cystic fibrosis and I actually didn't know anything about it. I didn't know what it affected. Um, and so to learn about it through a story that's based off of somebody's reality and to then get to know that person personally, I think it brought a lot of um, a lot of real life knowledge and application to the disease. I think that the best way to learn about something is to get to see it in real life and to see Nicole and to see her story. Um, I just think it was very, very telling of what a, the disease could could look like for somebody. Absolutely, I I agree wholeheartedly, and um, thank you. That's really a great uh, perspective, uh, Marissa. What was it like for you having to record parts of the show in different pieces? I know that some things were recorded um, together on Zoom. Other parts were uh, you were tasked to record things individually. Um, what was that experience like? Yes. Yeah, so uh, recording and me, uh, technology and me, we do not go together. So it was a little bit difficult for me. Um, <laughs> luckily, I have a brother in my house who can help me with that stuff. And Nicole and Adam and Andrew and Ashley, I never got a chance to work with her, but hopefully for the act two, I can. They were all great in directing me in, uh, you know, getting the best recording I can, what to do. And um yeah, it was it was a little challenging, and it, but it was fun to take multiple takes of each song and uh, just kind of do something differently with each take. And uh, I really, really enjoyed this process. So recording on my end wasn't the easiest, but thankfully we have an amazing, amazing crew and cast who were able to to make the process a little easier. So good, that's yeah. so exciting. It's it's such a weird time we live in, and it, it's kind of interesting that while it's a virtual reading of a play, it's almost kind of like we're filming a movie or a TV show or something with yes. takes and all the all this equipment. So that's really interesting. Um, Dan, you are one cast member that appears many times throughout the show. Um, what is one of your favorite moments that you got to perform or just a favorite moment in general? Um, um, some, some audience members yeah. don't know. Yeah, well... I, you know, I appear a lot of the, a lot as small uh, little characters. I think I appear as like, as a machine as, as much as I appear, appear as a human, which I think is really fun. But there's a, one line in the, everybody's gross, like a little interlude where uh, the mother is in the hospital that I'm, I have one line as a doctor. And I think it's like so hilarious that I just say like, man, this is the nineties. <laughs> you know, we don't care as much. Cause it's like, it, I, I just think that that was uh, a line that like, adds levity to that like very serious scene. It can kind of be a cathartic moment for the audience. Absolutely. Um, I think it, it, Nicole has done a great job of finding the humor in a lot of serious and often um, maybe not so funny moments that we really just flipped on their head and really uh, turned into this great comedy. And I'm really glad that uh, you all as ensemble members, especially you Dan have gotten to find that humor as well. Um, for sure. I'd like to now pose a question to Dominic, um, who also has appeared multiple times as different characters. Um, specifically, how did you tackle alternating those characters? Because your your setting isn't changing. Your you know there's no costume changes and stuff. So a lot of it comes through your performance. How did you? Uh, how were you able to tackle flipping between the different characters that you were playing? 
Well, it's really interesting. In theater, you play a myriad of different characters in a bunch of different plays. You really need to make the characters distinct and obvious. Uh, I know my main role that I played was Happy. I went to great strides to make him as unique and funny as I could be. And the more unique you make your characters, the more easily you can switch because Happy's physicality is different from, you know, when I played the voice or like the, uh, the person running the auditions. It's very, very different physically. Your vocal, when you, how you say things is extremely different. So uh, as long as you make distinct changes that make them sound and act very different, I, I find it at least pretty easy to switch back and forth. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you did a very good job, I think. Um, you all did an excellent job in, in conveying all of that. Uh, my last question that I have from uh, some audience members about the, the process and for you ensemble members specifically, um, I'm gonna post to Savannah. Uh, Savannah, do you think that uh, in this time of uncertainty or anything, do you think that virtual performances are something that's going to become more common now that we've all kind of dipped our toe in the waters of this, so to speak, do you think it's something that um, may, we may see more of or that you're hoping to see more of and experience? Yeah, um, I definitely think that the whole virtual performance is a d very different experience than, you know, meeting these people and working with them in a real space. But in some ways, some ways, I don't want to say it's better, but it's, it's, it's so different because like, like Marissa said, we get multiple takes to do these things. And um, I just think that it gives people an opportunity to see the show where they might not have made it to that day or that performance. So mm -hmm. I think that it is something that we can keep doing in the future, but it, it, it isn't live theater, but hopefully we can get back to that soon. <laughs> Absolutely. I know, I know from my experience, there's just nothing like being in the theater and getting to perform. Um, but I do want to commend all of you again, as we've been saying, um, for a, a job well done on, you know, your role specifically tackling so much of, supporting the show and the principal characters and um, putting on so many different hats. Um, so I, I really do commend you all for that. A round of applause from me to you. Um, I am gonna pass it back though to Mark for our final uh, grouping of questions. So we'll get the last few cast members in here, but thank you all so much. Yes, thank you guys. So coming up, we have both Jonathans, Zach, Jacob, and Avery and Shannon. Uh, so to start out, Jonathan, where's Vicky? Um, as a real doctor, I'll let you get settled in before you gotta hop on. Um, but as a real doctor in life, uh, what is it like to play a doctor in a musical? I've actually have played a doctor before in a couple other productions, including what is imagined in theater, like, oh, a doctor, where's Jonathan? So, um, <laughs> You know, what's interesting with this is that um, in a lot of ways, I almost view that he was an expressionistic uh, vision of what the is on through. But this is a young person not understanding the limitations and what the physician was trying to do takes that idea. In fact, a lot of times with the, the arc of this show, you see in act two where the, the Nicole or the, the character, you know, begins to understand what's actually happening, what's motivating the doctor and and the stress and the stakes that are there. So it's, um, it's, it's actually, it's refreshing actually to see something from a patient's perspective as a physician. You know, we're so used to being on this side of things to, to you know, understand what a young kid, and that's what I think the beauty of this particular piece, to see what a young kid, you know, a teenager going through this, you know, when the struggles they're trying to go through, it's, it's actually, it's a, it's, a, it's a great, like very personal view of what, you know, Nicole's struggles were, it's, 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 it's excellent. That's a really fantastic perspective. Um, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, Zach, I would like to ask you, um, did you, throughout this process, since we are creating an original musical, did you get to contribute anything to the creation of this story? And if so, how or what was it? Uh, awesome question, Mark. Um, so I did. Um, all of Nicole's rehearsals were super collaborative um so what would usually happen is we'd know what we were um what we were going to be rehearsing ahead of time and then we'd run it maybe one or two times and then afterwards um nicole would either have um a section she wanted to work on or she wanted to discuss and we'd all as um a team and as a cast get to kind of 
put our input in as to, oh, you know, we think a line should go here. Do we think that the line should be this? What kind of comedy are we going for here? Um, do we think this line needs to be in here? Should we just take it out? Okay, we'll just take it out. Um, and then obviously we all kind of got to create our characters because they were so, uh, they were so much of a blank slate for all of us. So that the fact that we knew a little bit about who they were in terms of just knowing that they were, um, they were, you know, the, the, what occupation they were or just one solid fact about them, whether it was that they were a director or they were a doctor um, or that they had IBS or that they have cystic fibrosis. So we get to know just the very uh, blanket, blank slate um, things about them. We kind of get to add our own spins to um, all of the different things that they have to offer for the show. That was wonderful. Thank you. And it's so, like we talked about a little bit earlier, it's so rare that everyone mm -hmm. gets to be involved to that level in a, in a musical. Um, so what a fantastic opportunity. And I'm sure everyone loved to hear about it. Um, Jonathan Wilcoxon, um, on a similar line, you were the narrator for this production. Um, so there wasn't as strict of a traditional role, but mm -hmm. I would hear um, about your developing, you know, if, if you have anything to add to Zach in adding to this piece and adding to this virtual performance that we had put together. I mean, I think the beauty of this project is uh, it's such a personal story. And um, like so Adam Brasowitz is the musical director and uh, we've known each other since 2007. So getting to like see his journey with cystic fibrosis, but then getting to see Nicole's, I got to like kind of put some of the personal emotions I've felt throughout seeing him and then get to see how I can put that into this production of what I'm witnessing. I mean, I was in every rehearsal with every scene. So I got to see um, the entire production and see all those emotional turns that people take. And so just kind of feeding off that and just knowing that I was the kind of grounding presence in the musical of I was just going to pop in and say something that would kind of, especially not being able to be present. So like when Gabby is sitting between Dr. Miller and Jack and like she has to shake their hands, I get to be that bridge of like connecting the visual to the virtual. And I think that was a really unique thing that I was not expecting um, when taking on this role of looking at how we would do this from this perspective of virtually. So it was a really cool project to be a part of and a really interesting experience to have this um, Zoom and uh, get to do all these rehearsals and meet awesome people on the East Coast when we're in uh, Wisconsin, so. <laughs> that was awesome. And I love how you spoke about it being personal because I think I speak for everyone involved in this project that this is very personal to us. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously from Nicole, Adam, you know, that's a story that they have and they experience day to day and are now sharing with the world. Um, and all of us have been affected by them in such a positive way and the story that they're trying to tell. Um, so really fantastic that, like you said, we were able to bridge the virtual with what we were doing and make this. Mm -hmm. So kind of in a similar vein to that question, Jacob, I would like to ask you um, about this process being virtual because for those watching who might not know, um, this was planned to be an in-person stage reading before the world is what it is now. Um, but the audition process even was virtual. Uh, so we were actually a little ahead of the curve um, on this whole virtual performance thing. So I would like to ask you, Jacob, what was it like auditioning in a non-traditional environment and rehearsing in this new world? So the audition was pretty straightforward. I had to sing a cut of a song from the show and I recorded it on like a little voice memo on my phone and then I sent it in and then Nicole got back to me and said, okay, um, we're choosing by the end of the day, we want, and then I got the call that I was casted in it and then we started rehearsals. And at first, you know, I didn't really use Zoom before, you know, you know, COVID-19 and stuff like that because I didn't even really know what it was before. I've never heard of it. So at first I had a little bit of trouble with the, um, with the tech stuff, but I figured it out. Um, and I feel like, you know, we're not in person when we do this, we're not in person as a cast, but I also feel like that connection when we're on Zoom because we're all collaborating together and we're all 
learning everything for the show. So I feel like Zoom was kind of a lifesaver in this because even though we weren't in person, we still got to work together and see each other and listen to each other's ideas. Awesome. So if you're listening, thank you, Zoom, for making... Yeah. Thank you, Zoom. Uh, Shannon, I would like to ask you, um, were there moments that were difficult because of doing this virtually and because creating a new musical online um, is something that none of us have ever done before? So were there struggles along the way? Um, I think you know, because it was such a new, a new thing and such uncharted territory. Um, there was a lot of kind of, um, going along, you know, hitting a speed bump. Oh, wait, what can we do to rectify this? Even in terms of, um, you know, us recording, sending recordings, being recorded on zoom. Um, it was just all very new, but I think it was handled by the team very, very well. Um, I've seen a lot of people trying to do um, these virtual shows and and it's it's a lot of work to put together, especially um, for the team who edited everything and and um, and so I just kind of give a shout out to them and you know it, it's it's hard and it's it's not as easy as it might look. So credit needs to be given where credit is due, I think. That's great. And yes, credit to the entire creative team and all of the editors and hours were spent mixing sound and putting these videos together. And thank you to the cast for the willingness to do this on Zoom and realizing that the story is worth telling and worth putting out into the world. Um, and it, it's worth adapting to, um, especially in hard times. Art is always worth it, truly. Um, so Avery, I would like to ask you, what was the most exciting part, on a happier note, what was the most exciting part about working on a virtual show? So I really, well, the most exciting part of the show was we got to, um, well, I never did an original cast before, so I was really excited about that. And I'm really ex I was really excited to meet new people and I loved everyone's voice. It was amazing. And um the, another exciting part was there was really funny and really happy parts in the show. And I love how like we got to do like our own like funny part and like we got to like make up something and like tell Nicole like what we should add in it and make it funny. And yeah, I had really fun. So thank you so much, everyone. Of course, and we were so glad you were able to join us for it and have fun. And it's not worth it if it's not fun at the end of the day. So thank you, Avery. Uh, Barbara, I would like to quickly ask you um, if you were familiar with cystic fibrosis before working on this project and if you were or if you were not what were you able to learn and what will you take from your experience working on a musical comedy about cystic fibrosis uh, you're on mute, mute, mute Barbara no problem I mean I see you would never know it um, it was really interesting because I did a show with Nicole, um, gosh, Nicole, was it 10 years ago? Maybe a little longer? Had no idea she was sick. She informed me during the rehearsal period that one of the performances we did, she actually had the IV bag under her skirt. Wow. Um, so I didn't really know anything about cystic fibrosis. I had you know, heard a little bit um, about it uh, on TV. I think some pretty famous athletes kids had it. So I think Boomer and son, I could be wrong. Um, so I didn't really know anything about it until Nicole approached me about this. The thing that I really loved is that Nicole is obviously not a dour person. She's like the Energizer Bunny. She's incredibly up and warm. And it was very important to her that this not be maudlin and this not be morbid and sad. Um, so it's interesting, you always think of people who have illnesses as someone who's living with an, well, 
is a victim of an illness. And it's so nice through this and knowing Nicole to know that they're dealing with the illness and life goes on and, and they have they aspire to do other things and, and they wanna make their lives exciting and happy. And, and that I think was even a bigger lesson for me than what I learned about the disease itself. That's amazing. And I think you hit the nail on the head when you say that Nicole's attitude has been inspiring for years. I mean, I personally have known Nicole for at least 15 years in my life. Um, and her optimism and passion has always been the driving force in who she is as a person. Um, so thank you for sharing that. And thank you all for sharing your thoughts on this story, on this process, and for joining us. Uh, and thank you, viewers. I'm going to pass it uh, back to Jack to wrap us up. Yes. Uh... Well, I wish we could all stay here and talk so much more about the process and rehearsals and the development of this show. Um, we are coming up on our time, so I don't want to take up any more than we have already. But I would just again like to echo Mark's statement and not only thank the viewers who are watching right now for participating and supporting us, um, but also a one more shout out and round of applause to the cast um, for doing such an excellent job. Um, a uh, reminder that for those who booked a ticket to this performance, you will be receiving a survey where you can share more feedback or ask more questions. And if you didn't actually book a ticket and you stumbled onto this YouTube stream um, after the fact, you can email fallriskmusical at gmail.com to uh, receive the link to the survey. Um, but of course, that's all in the chat that's going on right now. Below is also a link to submit um, more feedback questions if you want us to reach out via social media or via email, as well as our GoFundMe, because we all want to support this project and any little bit can help us do that. Um, the final thing I have to say is, of course, follow us on social media so you can stay up to, up to date as frequently as possible. We are on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, as you know. Um, but other than that, I just want to say thank you one more time for um, coming to enjoy Fall Risk, and we look forward to the next time that we can present the next level and stage of this process. Um, I give it back to the cast now to just give one final wave goodbye so you can see all their talented, shining faces. Look at this great bunch of actors and talented stars. Um, that's all we have today for our talk back. Thank you all so much for joining us. Have a good one.